Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Tanner here and welcome to a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at one of the weakest storylines in Ninjago involving the character of Zane. Now, there are a lot of things that are really great ideas in Ninjago but are kind of executed poorly. On the opposite side, there are several things in Ninjago that are really good ideas and are executed in a really positive way. The majority of Ninjago is very good, however, it's not perfect. I do have some issues with some areas of the story, especially this storyline right here involving Zane's rule as the Ice Emperor. Now, my criticism doesn't really have to do with the storyline at hand or how Zane became the Ice Emperor. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on the aftermath, or in better terms, the lack of an aftermath involving Zane's rule in the Never Realm. Now, in terms of a little bit of a history lesson, what exactly caused Zane to become the Ice Emperor? If you guys remember back during Season 11's midpoint, Zane was kind of blasted into the Never Realm by Asphira's magic, and he woke up in the Never Realm with no memories, but he had the scroll scroll of Forbidden Spinjitsu with him, along with the Titan Mech, which was just kind of left over in pieces from the battle against Asphira. He was then manipulated by General Vex, a character that kind of existed in the realm beforehand, and he just kind of, you know, fell through a couple of hardships himself, so he decided to kind of take advantage of Zane's amnesia and take him under his wing, and gradually convinced him that he was indeed the proper ruler of this realm, otherwise known as the Ice Emperor. Under Vex's control, Zane served as the Ice Emperor for several decades, as evidently he was sent back into the past when Asphira teleported him to the realm, so he was basically the Ice Emperor for longer than he was a ninja. Tommy Andreessen and other Ninjago creators estimate that about 60 years had passed in between when Zane came to the Never Realm and when he was eventually rescued by the ninja. Now I for one think that this is a really, really good idea. The amnesia side of the story is a little generic, but that's besides the point. I feel like Zane being a cruel dictator is a really good and really amazing idea, especially in an environment such as the Never Realm where it's supposedly the super distant realm that not a lot of people can escape from. This is definitely a very good storyline for Zane, very unique, not really relating to anything that we had seen from the character prior, but I really don't enjoy the aftermath of it like I mentioned. I feel like it's a very cool setting and a very cool idea, Zane being the ruler of this frozen wasteland, but like I said, the main problem that I have with the story isn't the story itself, it's the aftermath. Specifically what I mean by that is Zane was not affected in any way by his transformation and and inevitable rule as the Ice Emperor, and I think this is a very huge missed opportunity. Immediately following Season 11 was Season 12, Prime Empire, which definitely shifted the focus in terms of what uh, Season 11 was kind of setting up. In Prime Empire, Zane is nowhere to be found in the actual video game. Him and Pixel can't really transport themselves into the game due to some weird wiring issue regarding Ninjroids and Prime Empire itself, so they decided to stay on the outside. Now, when Prime Empire was coming out, myself and several other people were very excited to see what would happen with Zane's character, as maybe him not being a part of the main story perhaps meant that maybe Maybe he was still feeling the heat from his time as the Ice Emperor. Remember, as the Ice Emperor, Zane did a lot of stuff. Several instances of mass genocide, a couple of other really not so good things, so Zane in the Never Realm was not a very good person. Obviously, it wasn't his fault entirely, it was still General Vex, but he still carried out a lot of those orders himself. He still caused the deaths of several citizens in the Never Realm, so him just coming out of that unscathed is kind of unrealistic to me and a lot of other people, and a lot of us were kind of disappointed to find that Prime Empire would not be expanding that storyline for Zane at all. And I feel like that's a very big missed opportunity, like I said. Of course, Prime Empire was very tight in terms of a story. Maybe there wasn't enough time to kind of flesh out Zane's guilt, and maybe there was hardly any time for that kind of stuff because the story was trying to be, well, the story. The season was prioritizing the main Prime Empire storyline. Maybe Zane and Pixel really didn't have that much place in Prime Empire after all. However, they still had some type of storyline trying to navigate on the outside and solve the mysteries of uh, that were not located within Prime Empire itself, so I feel like they could have totally had some type of scenario where Zane and Pixel kind of worked on Zane's mental state. I would have loved to have seen that. Maybe in the form of Zane trying to give back to the Never Realm and maybe get back there in order to help out some of the citizens that are still there. Remember, after the ninja left the Never Realm, it was pretty much back to normal, with a lot of the ninja's influence carrying the realm to a more bright future, I imagine. So Zane could always go back there. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get back, but 
I feel like he would have tried to find a way. And if he couldn't get back to the Neverrealm, maybe he could just give back to Ninjago itself. He would still be making up for his sins in a way, I suppose, but it's not like he would be giving back to the people that he directly hurt, if that makes sense. So I feel like if we wanted to find maybe a way to make Zane go through some type of crisis like that, remember, within the context of Ninjago, Zane has spent more time technically as the Ice Emperor than he has as a ninja. Surely his mind would have been a little messed up by something regarding that, or maybe everything just kind of went away after he was off the influence of Forbidden Spinjitsu. Who really knows? We do know that Zane was indeed hopped up on Forbidden Spinjitsu for about 60 years at a time, and maybe that should have messed with his mind a little bit, perhaps caused him to think a little differently, especially when he came out of that after the end of Season 11. But no, instead we were just treated to Detective Zane, which, you know, in and of itself was pretty fun. But ultimately, I really don't think that Prime Empire capitalized on what it could for Zane. I feel like Zane going through an identity crisis would have been a really excellent storyline, but I understand why they didn't do it. I feel like, as I said, Prime Empire was very close quarters. There wasn't a lot of room to expand out. It's not like the season was 30 episodes like season 11 was. Instead, Prime Empire was only 16 episodes, which is ultimately, you know, too small of a time frame to introduce another storyline. Prime Empire already had a lot of other stuff going on. I can understand if it was a time constraint type of thing, but like I said, it just seems a little too unrealistic. I feel like if Zane would have realistically come out of that situation, he probably still would not be able to handle using his ice powers. I feel like that's also something that they could have capitalized on. Maybe Zane doesn't want to use his powers anymore because of the guilt that he feels. Maybe he just wants to go back to being an unpowered up ninja. Who's to say? I feel like there were a lot of opportunities here to explore that, that the season just really didn't take. I don't think that affects the actual, I guess, quality of the ice chapter, if you want to call it that, but I feel like it definitely kind of makes that entire storyline not as relevant as it could have been. It's not like anything kind of came from that afterwards. In terms of Zane, he was just kind of fine. Back to normal, business as usual. Doesn't seem too realistic to me. Like I said, seems a little too clean. So I feel like having the season explore his guilt would have definitely been beneficial to Zane's character. Zane is not a cruel person by default. I imagine he would indeed feel guilt over this to some degree. When you look at the situation, I mean, sure it was kind of General Vex's fault, but Zane still carried out those orders like I said earlier. He still gave the final call. There's always going to be some level of debate regarding whether or not Zane should actually face repercussions for this. I imagine that would also be a very interesting storyline to explore throughout Ninjago's 12th season. Say for example, Zane comes back from the Never Realm and suddenly he's detained by police because of all the crimes that he committed during his time in the Never Realm. As I said earlier, he was there for 60 years. He's spent more time as a villain as opposed to being a ninja. Obviously, there's going to be some debate regarding whether or not Zane should actually face punishment for this kind of stuff, and it doesn't really stop within the Ninjago storyline. A lot of Ninjago fans have kind of argued about this back and forth as well from what I've seen. Some fans think that Zane should totally face some type of punishment for this, while other fans think that Zane was totally innocent and had nothing to do with all of the terrible things that happened under his rule as the Ice Emperor, which in a sense both sides are kind of right in that regard. On the one side you have people saying that it wasn't Zane's fault technically because he was under the control of General Vex, and on the other side you have people saying that no, it is his fault. He did this. He carried out all these orders as the Ice Emperor. He was the leader. For the side that states that perhaps Zane should not face any type of punishment for this because it wasn't his fault, it was simply General Vex's fault. For example, that's like saying you did something only because somebody told you to do it. Well, terrific. You still did it. It's not their fault. It's your fault. And I feel like Zane would totally follow through with that ideal and try to make up for it in some way, shape, or form. Pixel could have been there as moral support, helping out Zane along the way, but ultimately Prime Empire decided to go in a different direction. I also remember there were a lot of rumors at the time that Zane was not in Prime Empire because he was going to die again. Obviously, that didn't really turn out to be the case. I remember hearing a lot of rumors that Zane would sacrifice himself as a way to kind of make up for his actions as the Ice Emperor, but obviously, like I said, nothing ever really came from this. We already had a Zane sacrifice. It was very unlikely that he was ever going to do that again and then come back in a different form, but overall, I still feel like Zane could have definitely experienced some type of guilt from being the Ice Emperor. It's one of Ninjago's greatest ideas, and I will still stand by that to this day, but the execution is very odd, I'd say. A little too clean, I want to say, maybe a little too perfect. I feel like Zane could have definitely spent some time experiencing some guilt and 
actually trying to make up for said guilt, but the storyline decided to go a little different, which obviously isn't the best case scenario. I feel like it could definitely be expanded on a little more, but ultimately, like I said, it's one of Ninjago's best ideas. Zane becoming an evil Ice Emperor, very good, very solid idea, but I don't know. The execution was just kind of, like I said, a little too clean in my opinion. That's going to pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts on Zane's Ice Emperor storyline. Feel free to leave a comment down below talking about what you think about this. Do you feel like Zane could have totally experienced some type of guilt during Prime Empire, or do you feel like the series kind of went away from this storyline for a reason? I just thought it would have been a really cool thing for Zane's story to actually have him experience some guilt and try to make up for that guilt during Prime Empire. But leave all your thoughts down below, you guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media. As always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again the Marvelous Jan. Thank you guys so much for watching this video once again. My name is Santa Fishes, and with that, I bid you farewell.